Hey, what's up Photography Mafia? In this video tutorial, we're gonna take a look at Topaz Photo AI and why its image sharpening and noise reduction is better than most other photography software, including Lightroom Classic, which we're looking at right now. And in this video, you're gonna see how it helps your wildlife photography. So with this photo, I took it in Sumatra, in the island of Sumatra in Indonesia several years ago. Obviously, it's an orangutan. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's quite a bit of noise and the image lacks sharpness. Right now, if I click on reset here, these are the default settings for Lightroom Classics sharpening and noise reduction. So there's no luminance noise reduction, but there is a little bit of color noise reduction, which I don't think matters in this case. But anyways, the ISO is at 2500 right now on this photo that I took, I believe with my Canon 6D. And if I try to improve the sharpening or reduce the noise, you can see the image looks a little bit too soft. Even if I add a little bit more detail and a little bit more contrast. And if I play with the sharpening slider, it reintroduces a little bit noise or the micro contrast or the micro sharpening is not that good. Even if I use the masking tool and if I click and hold the option or alt key, it still doesn't work that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this and I'm going to just keep it at the default settings for sharpening and color noise reduction under the detail panel in Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to right click on this image and then I'm going to click on edit in and I'm going to click on Topaz Photo AI. And usually you want to keep the file format at TIFF and according to Lightroom, the color space is better to work with Pro Photo RGB. So I'll just keep that here and I'll click on edit and it will take a few seconds, but it's going to open up another file. It'll create a TIFF file and it'll open up in Topaz Photo AI. And right now I have the Topaz Photo AI to automatically apply its best settings. So as you can see, it automatically applied noise or denoise. Let me just close this here and uh, let's take a look at this by zooming in. So already this image, just from what I remember, it already looks better with the noise reduction compared to Lightroom Classic. And what I need to do also is I need to sharpen it a little bit more. So in this case, Topaz Photo AI did not suggest sharpening. So if I zoom back out, the photo looks all right just with the noise reduction. Let me see, it's finished processing here. So it looks all right, but I think I want to add a little bit more sharpening. So let me zoom back in. I'm going to click on add enhancements. I'm going to go to sharpen here. Now let's see what default settings it applies. So right now it applied the default setting of natural and the strength of 22. It looks a little bit cooked. So I want to decrease the strength here. So let's see how that looks. That looks a little bit better. One thing to keep in mind is it auto selected the subject. So if I zoom back out, actually, let me zoom back in a little bit more. Let me take a look at what it selected. So it kind of missed the arms here or the legs. So what I can do is I can click on edit selection. I can decrease the brush size and I can just start painting a little bit here. even if it's not that great, but that'll do. And I'll go back to the controls and let's take a look here. It's gonna process. So I think this is a little bit too much. So let me decrease the strength of the sharpening. And it'll take a few seconds to process. This actually looks a little bit better. I'm gonna take a look at the AI model of standard. See how that looks. It's at 37. And let me see what I can do here. Yeah, I think I like the natural a little bit better. Let's say I'm gonna move it to about eight here. And yeah, that looks a lot better. I'm going to zoom in. And I just wanna make sure the noise reduction isn't too much and not ruining the sharpness. So I'll go to denoise here. I'll decrease it to about 25. Let's take a look at how it looks. So 
So I don't see too much noise here in the background or on the orangutan. So I think I can decrease a little bit more to 20. And that finished processing. So now I'm just going to increase the sharpness to about 12. So I need to like find a good balance between sharpness and noise reduction. So I think I'll keep it at this. If I zoom out, let's see how it looks. I just want to make sure it looks a little bit more natural. No, I don't like this. So I'm going to decrease the strength back to eight or seven. Yeah, I think this looks a lot better. So now I'm going to click on export to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And it'll just take a few seconds to process and it'll render or create this TIFF file. So great. So this TIFF file is getting processed right now. So the preview should be rendered soon. So here it is right now. So I'm going to compare these two images of what Lightroom Classic did and what Topaz Photo AI did. So I'm going to go and move this here. So now you can see this is the before with Lightroom Classic. Of course, it's without the adjustments, only the default adjustments. And this is with Topaz Photo AI. So that looks a lot better. So now what we can do is we can make this TIFF file a little bit better. You can see I do need to crop this. So I'm going to go to the crop tool here. I'll put a 16 by 9. I will move this up like this, I think. No, I want to keep this tree in here, actually. So I'll put a rule of thirds along this quadrant area. And move it up. Make sure I get some of the arm here. And I think that's good. It's not a master cropping tutorial, but which is fine. Now I want to improve this image a little bit. So I'm going to go to the masking tool. Actually, I need to remove this spot here at least. So I'll go to the healing tool and I have the healing brush selected. And I'm going to just take off that white spot, which is really annoying. Okay, that's gone. And now I'm going to the masking tool. I will create a radial gradient. I will select this orangutan. And I'll need to make an oval shape. And let's see here. It really depends on how much of this orangutan and if I want to get its legs and arms here in it. Okay, I think that's good enough. So I'm just going to increase a little bit of contrast here. And let's see, add a little bit of saturation. And where's the clarity? And I usually like bringing a little bit more focus into my... Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more texture too. And decrease the clarity, the midtone contrast. I usually like bringing a little bit more focus to my subject by increasing the midtones just like that a little bit. It is a little bit counterintuitive since I was adjusting contrast and midtone contrast here, but increasing the midtones here, I like how it looks. And I could maybe drop down the shadows a little bit like that. And like that. Yeah, so I'll only slightly increase the shadows. Okay, that looks good. And one other thing is I want to make this area around the orangutan a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to my mask. I'm going to duplicate and invert it. And then I'm just going to decrease the highlights. And then I'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit. That looks good. And now I'm going to go back to the basic panel or actually the effects panel and then just do the regular corner or side vignetting to give it even a more or a better focus to the orangutan. So that looks good. So this is the before image without the crop, of course. 
and this is with the edits including some noise reduction and sharpening so what do you guys think of topaz photo ai i do want to point out that topaz photo ai doesn't always do magic especially with like old or pixelated photos however if you have a decent image where you can noticeably see the subject then it does a really good job and if you enjoyed this video you know what to do and as always live easy sleep breezy and stay lovely